I want to talk about antifreeze and freeze drying. Antifreeze is used in engine blocks to keep them from freezing and cracking the engine block. A 50-50 mix of antifreeze will go down to minus 34 degrees below zero. And what does this have anything to do with freeze drying? Well, in the freeze drying world, we have basically three antifreezes. We have salt, sugar, and oils. Now, a 50-50 solution of sugar doesn't freeze until 22 degrees. Oil, vegetable oil and olive oil, won't freeze until about 10 or 12 degrees. And the biggest antifreeze ingredient is salt. At a 20% solution of salt, that fluid will not freeze until 2 degrees. Depending on what mode or what settings you have on your freeze dryer, the vacuum pump will not turn on until it, until zero degrees or minus 20 degrees. If you have a, a solution that is still in a liquid state that is not frozen, what will happen is when the vacuum is applied, your liquid will start to boil at a much warmer temperature. At room temperature, water will boil under vacuum at 68 degrees. And so if your food or your liquids that you're freeze drying are not yet frozen when the vacuum pump turns on, whatever liquids are there will start to boil. And that can make a real big mess if your foods are not fully frozen. And that's why they need to be frozen before the vacuum pump turns on because your, your foods, whether that's liquid or solid will begin to boil and splatter within the, the freeze dry chamber. So there's what to do. You can basically get around these freezing points the same way an engine can be damaged with regular antifreeze. If we take these ingredients, salt, sugar, and oil, and dilute them down enough, we can raise a freezing point by diluting them down with water to where they will freeze by the time the vacuum pump turns on. Can you freeze dry chocolate? Well, by the definition of freeze drying, you cannot freeze dry chocolate. In its solid form, chocolate only contains between one half percent to one and a half percent of moisture. And that is already at the point where moisture in chocolate really can't be removed. The problem with chocolate also, it contains between 5 and 20 percent of oil and a lot of sugar. And the oil and the sugar are two of those antifreeze anti ingredients, so to speak, that prevents chocolate from being freeze-dried properly. Plus you also have the problem with the heating process within the freeze dryer that once the heaters turn on, it's going to melt your chocolate anyway. But there is something you can do to manipulate chocolate to freeze dry it and that would be by adding water and that just sounds crazy but adding water to chocolate can alter chocolate to make it a long-term storage item now one of the problems with chocolate is chocolate will start to melt around 72 degrees and in many homes your pantry can get above 72 degrees at that point, that's when the fats and the, uh, the oils will start separating uh, inside the chocolate and cause what's called fat bloom. And that's that white kind of powdery substance you can often see on chocolate that is either really old or has been really cold or really hot. So we're going to freeze dry chocolate. I'm going to show you how to do it. And once it's done, some of the unique characteristics that chocolate will take on. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to melt the chocolate under low heat. Now once the chocolate is fully melted, we're going to add two cups of water to this. This is actually hot water. Now 
that this is mixed, we're going to go ahead and put the pan inside the freezer and we're going to pour the chocolate mixture into the pan and freeze it. I started with 11 and a half ounces of milk chocolate chips and we melted them with two cups of water and we stuck them in the freeze dryer. And what came out is basically this. Uh, I did weigh this and this comes out to just a shy of 11 and a half ounces of chocolate. So all the chocolate is still here. And it's kind of a, a freeze drying process. You can see where the freeze drying process kind of crystallized all the sugar but it's still basically milk chocolate but it's kind of like a dry milk chocolate now it, the, uh, the structure of milk chocolate has changed from the original chocolate chip so we're going to put this in the food processor and I'm going to go ahead and powder this up Okay, that comes to 11.35 ounces, about the same amount when we first started this. Now one of the things we're going to do, we're going to take some of this chocolate, put it on the plate here, and we're going to take some chocolate chips and put it on this plate right here. We're going to try going with about the same amount. I'm going to throw this in the microwave to see what happens. Okay, I put both these trays in the microwave and you'll see that these chocolate chips are totally melted. Okay, so that's still in a melting state. And the freeze dried chocolate is still in a powdered state. So I'm not sure exactly what the freeze drying does now. There's some of this that is kind of sticky, but it's not, it won't melt like this chocolate will do. This is still kind of crumbly, if I could put, put it in those terms. So freeze drying the chocolate kind of transformed it, but I'm not sure what it transformed it into. And I don't know if by doing this alters the chocolate or changes anything. Unfortunately, I can't taste the chocolate because I'm allergic to chocolate. So I'm going to have to have some of my family taste test this and tell me if this still tastes like chocolate. So the question, can milk chocolate be freeze dried? Well, yes it can. So when I made the liquid uh, chocolate by mixing two cups of water with this, the freeze drying process removed the water so we're back to just having the milk chocolate. The only problem is I can't really experiment with this any further. So if someone watching this video wants to take a pack of, of chocolate chips and put two cups of water in it and melt it and then freeze dry it and then play around with it, I'd love to know what happens. Unfortunately because of my allergies and issues I cannot eat this chocolate. I can't taste it to see what happens to it as I manipulate it. And so this is about as far as I can take this experiment. But yes, you can freeze dry chocolate, but I don't know what you can do with it once it's done. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this is somewhat informative and helpful. I just don't know what to do with it. Thank you. I have my freeze-dried chocolate right here and we're just going to run a couple of tests. So we're going to take some of the freeze-dried chocolate and we're going to put it into the bowl and we're going to take some regular chocolate chips put them into a bowl. Now i got some hot water here 
we add the hot water here and we can have hot water here. Now one thing about the freeze dried chocolate is this will dissolve into water almost instantly. Where when you have chocolate chips here, I mean it will it looks like if I stirred this enough it would eventually would uh, dissolve but it looks like it's becoming kind of a coagulated mess here. For the chocolate here has dissolved almost instantly. And one of the things that my kids have said is when this is dissolved into water it's more like hot chocolate than it is like milk chocolate. So they say this tastes more like hot chocolate than milk chocolate where this really has a hard time dissolving. So that could be one benefit of freeze-dried chocolate is its ability to dissolve in water faster than real milk chocolate. But it's still milk chocolate. Now let me tell you something about my wife. My wife is really into making cakes. She's like this Wilton whiz. I mean she's I guess uh, she's a certified instructor for Wilton and for those people who don't know what Wilton is Wilton is a company that makes cake pans and tips and bags and everything you need to decorate cakes and my wife is really into that and so I'm starting to wonder is since you really can't you know you have cocoa powder which I guess you could probably dust a cake with but that's going to be really bitter but maybe this freeze-dried chocolate could be used for dusting a cake, a birthday cake, wedding cake, or whatever, without having the bitter taste. So, in cooking and maybe with uh, decorating cakes, this powdered freeze dried chocolate could come in kind of neat in cake decorating. So, that's one other thing that I think freeze dried chocolate could be used for. Sounds of happiness. I'm going to show off my superior hand eye coordination skills. Mm. How's that taste? Pretty good, yeah. Okay. Ooh. No. Okay. How's mm. that taste? Really good, yeah. 